In this video you will learn why do we need Pretty, how to configure it by using Pretty RC and what is the difference between Yeslint and Pretty. And actually Pretty is one of the tools that I am using constantly every single day when I am writing code. And if you are doing some web development, you must install Pretty immediately because it helps us tremendously. So what is Pretty at all? As you can see here on the official website, it is an opinionated code formatter. It actually means that you can't really configure it deeply, and it will prettify your code so it looks exactly the same for all members of your team. And actually it doesn't matter if you are working alone or with team, it simply saves you lots of times by prettifying your code. And here how it works. As you can see here we have a JS file and I simply have a wrong indentation. I can just write here whatever I want and then just hit save. As you can see everything is aligned. And actually this is quite simple code. You can have something different here. And it doesn't matter if some of your teammates will write something like this, just some expressions in the single line, you hit Ctrl S and then everything is prettified by Pretty. And here is the point why Pretty is so popular, because you can't really configure it, you just install it and out of the box you get without any configuration your Pretty Fine. And this is why it shines in comparison with ESLint. And actually ESLint was created previously, but it was not that popular as Pretty and Pretty really solves this specific problem. So your code will always look the same, does not matter who wrote it, just after saving or running Pretty. And obviously you can use Pretty from the command line, but nobody is doing that. It really makes sense to run Pretty from the command line only if you want to just prettify all files inside the project where you didn't have Pretty previously. If you are simply working on your code, like you are writing HTML, CSS, JavaScript or TypeScript, because actually as you can see here Pretty supports lots of stuff, you simply need to configure your editor so when you are saving the file, Pretty will be automatically running. Now let's look on the configuration. And actually I said that we can't really configure Pretty. Actually we can, but just a little, we can't configure specific rules inside Pretty, so we are not changing away how Pretty will format our code. And to write the config we must create a new file inside our project, which will be .prettyrc. And now inside I want to paste the config that I am using for all my projects, and this is it. So we have here first of all tab width, which is 2, which actually means it will be prettified to two spaces. We are using single quotes for all our strings, print width is the maximum width of your line, it is 80, bracket spacing is false, which means inside our objects, for example when we have A1, pretty won't put here spaces, because I don't like that. And last here is semicolon false. Actually in my projects I never use semicolons. You might like that, this is why you can set semicolon to true, this is totally fine. There are just three cases inside JavaScript when your code will break without a semicolon. And typically people are not writing that three cases. This is why it is totally fine to write JavaScript without semicolon. And here is important thing to mention. I wrote here print width 80 and this is super popular configuration. But a lot of people with ultra wide monitors really like to put here like at least 120 or even 150. In this case your code will be really really long. And actually it is a problem because for your eyes and for your brain it is much easier to read a line which is not that long. This is why I highly recommend you to use print with 80. But these are not all rules which exist inside Pretty. Actually here in the official website you can see all rules. Here on the right for example we have 21 rule, which means we don't have a lot of them. And here we can't really change how Pretty will prettify our code. So first of all tab width, we already talked about it, this is the amount of spaces. Here are we using tabs or spaces, we can define that, then semicolons you already know, how we will write quotes, double quote or single quote, do we need to write quotes inside properties, by default you can also change that, but actually I can say that by default all these options are making a lot of sense. For example quote props is as needed, which actually means Pretty will add quotes around object properties only when it is needed, not always. 
Then we have here GSX quotes, trailing commas, bracket spacing and so on. And actually I can say that you don't need here more than 6 or 7 rules, because a lot of stuff here is not needed for every single project. For example, you can specify a path or a parser for Prettier itself. But it doesn't make a lot of sense, because Prettier will find out by itself if you are using for example TypeScript, SCSS or something else. And all these options you can simply write inside your Prettier RC. The next important question is what is the difference between Prettier and ESLint and what sense does it make to use Prettier if we have ESLint? And a lot of students are asking me these questions. This is why we must clarify it. So what ESLint can do for us? Actually formatting rules is the first one, so it formats our code and secondly checking the code quality, which actually means we have some rules regarding syntax, for example we should not write console logs or we must use const let instead of var. What we have inside pretty, we just have a first point from these two points, we have a formatting of our code, but most importantly here we can't configure with rules how our code will be prettified. Pretty simply does it and this is it. This is why it is so easy to use it, this is why pretty is much more popular than yeslint. And here is a super important bonus of using pretty that you must know and leverage. And actually Prettier can help you to write valid code. Why that? Because actually we are just writing some code and really often we simply save the file. And what is really cool, you stop thinking regarding intendation, you are just focusing on the code. For example here I am providing some function foo and I can write inside this function console log foo. I am saving this file and it is correctly prettified. What is important here? Actually, if my code is invalid, then Prettier won't prettify it. This is super important to remember. This helps you tremendously when you are writing the code, so you will know that your code is invalid. And by invalid, I mean, for example, you lost here a bracket. Let's remove here a bracket, and I am saving this. And as you can see, this code can't be prettified. And you don't need TypeScript or some validation, you don't need to run this code in browser. You know that you have here an error, because your code won't prettified by Prettier. This is why we can by default see, if our code is not prettified, it means that we have a problem with our code. And actually, if you are interested to learn how you can copy nested objects inside JavaScript correctly, make sure to check this video also.